What's up guys, we are Paperplane Productions and if you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button because we put out videos every single week. So today, we're talking about 5 ways to get the most cinematic footage out of your entry level DSLR. To go from this, to this. Let's do it. Now before we begin full disclosure, this tutorial works best if you guys already have some experience shooting with your DSLR and for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to be using a Canon 600D. They don't even make these cameras anymore. But if you really know how to use these bad boys, you can get some pretty tasty footage out of it. So let's dive right into it. So what is a flat profile? Well, it's this. I know what you're thinking, this looks dull without any contrast. However, this will allow you to expose your video perfectly, giving you the maximum dynamic range, which is something that is super characteristic with the cinematic look. The real magic with the flat profile happens when you take the clip into post-production. Hey guys, this is Anirudh. Today we'll be color correcting a video shot on flat profile. We'll be using Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2017. Now, as you can see, I've already imported the video onto Premiere Pro and I've brought it onto my timeline. The first thing to do is to go to your Windows panel and open the Lumetri Color tab if you don't have it open already. You'll see these six different panels on the side, but for the purpose of this video, we'll only be dealing with basic correction. Now the first thing to do is to set your white balance. Now if you've already set the white balance on your camera, then you don't really need to do this. Now you can start tweaking around the different tone settings, which includes exposure, contrast, highlights, etc. I'm just going to mess around with these till I find what I like. There's really no set rule, so you can be as subjective as you want depending on your video and the colors you want. The basic idea is to bring back the colors and to add a little bit of contrast. As you can see, the video already looks a lot better. Once you've figured out the basic correction, you can start experimenting with the rest of the panels. Each of them is a tutorial by itself, but if done right, then just basic correction can make your video go from this to this. Now there are two ways you can get a flat profile onto your camera. Either you can do it manually by dropping the saturation and contrast or you guys can do what we do and download the Cine Style profile off the Technicolor website. We'll be dropping the link in the description. Now when you do download Cine Style, the website is going to tell you all about how to get it onto your camera and how to use it but it's worth noting that this only works for Canon cameras. There are flat profiles for all brands though and we'll be dropping those links in the description as well so give that a look. Alright, so we know you've heard this like a million times, but lighting is super, super, super important, especially when it comes to entry level DSLRs for, for two reasons. One is the crop sensor and two is the low ISO range that the camera has. At around ISO 800, you're already going to find really grainy footage and it's going to make your entire project look super amateur. So shoot in daylight or use artificial light to light up your shot. And if it's too dark outside or you don't have artificial lighting, then maybe just don't shoot. talk about slow motion. Now in our opinion slow motion is probably the coolest thing you can do to make your b-roll look super cinematic so what you can do is shoot at a higher frame rate. Now the Canon 600D for example in the PAL format allows you to shoot at 50 frames per second but if you do this and switch over to NTSC it'll let you shoot at a higher frame rate of 60 frames per second. Keep in mind that at 60 frames per second your quality will drop to about 720p but that's the trade-off. To slow this clip down you have to head back into post. Converting a video to slow motion in post-production is really easy. Now there are multiple ways to do this, but the method we find most useful is to simply right-click the clip, go to speed duration, and change the speed to 40%. This will change a 60fps shot to a 24fps one. As you can see, the clip becomes a lot longer. Now you can just trim it to the section that you want, and there you go. Keep in mind that the higher your frame rate, the more you can lower the speed of your clip. Letterboxing refers to the cropping of videos from the 16 by 9 aspect ratio to the standard cinematic 2.35 by 1. The result is a widescreen video with black bars on both the top and the bottom. To achieve this effect on Premiere Pro, simply go to the effects panel and search for crop. Either drag it onto your clip or simply double click it. Then fill in 12% for both the top and the bottom values. Make sure that your zoom is unchecked and that your edge feather is set to 0. You'll see that your video is now cropped to 2.35 by 1. However, keep in mind that you will lose out 24% of your actual frame when you letterbox your footage. So keep the crop in mind when shooting so that you don't 
lose your actual subject in the crop. So the final tip that we leave you with is composition. The film look is all about telling a story and it's your job as a cinematographer to tell the audience what is important in a shot and what isn't. Using a variety of shots and angles better allows you to communicate the same point and just simply makes your footage look better. So one can achieve this film look either by using a low aperture to blur out the background and keep your subject in sharp focus or by using different angles to highlight a certain aspect of your shot. When you incorporate this tip into your project along with the previous four, add your own music and your own creative flair to it, you could get something that looks like this. It's like a dance, the way that you Shake your head in full denial you love the truth Didn't get a chance to say it loud So if you guys want to try this tutorial out, then what you can do is post your edited clip on Instagram and tag us. We'd love to check your workout and maybe even share some ideas. A special thank you to Dia Pinto, she's a very good friend and an amazing artist. We'll drop her links in the description below, you have to check her workout, she's awesome. So that's it from us for today guys, hopefully this tutorial was helpful to you and you learned something today. If you guys enjoyed the video then be sure to hit the like button, if you love the video, subscribe to the channel and if you are subscribed already, make sure you've got your little notification bell on, we put out videos every week and we don't want you to miss any of it. Also, if you guys want to learn a photo or video technique that we use in our vlog and our work, then drop a comment in this video. Alright guys, that's what we leave you with and hopefully we'll see you in the next one.